All right, so good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Michael McClinton. I'm one of the business advisors here with the Collin SBDC. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you for attending today's seminar. Uh, if this is your first seminar, welcome. Uh, if you've had the opportunity to visit other seminars in the past that we've offered, uh, welcome back. If you're interested in seeing any of the other uh, Hold on, slide went. <laughs> interested in seeing any of the other uh, webinars uh, or seminars that we have in place part of the CARES program, you can visit our website. And at our website, you will be able to uh, take a look at as well as register. In addition to that, all of the seminars that's part of the CARES series, uh, they all will be on our YouTube channel. Uh, and they normally are uploaded about a week after the session. So this session will be available as well as uh, the previous sessions. And then lastly, uh, I encourage you to complete the CARES application on our website at no charge, which can give you an opportunity uh, to get custom consulting, uh, specialized training, or even more focus, uh, focused business resources uh, to address your specific business needs. Uh, but without further ado, let me turn it over to our, our presenter today, uh, Margot Kotman. Uh, and she can start now. Here we go. I sorry, sorry about that snafu, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I'm working on. I'm not that great with technology. Um, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Margot Kopman. Um, I own a company called Project Retail. We help independent retailers um, be as profitable as they can be through cash flow planning. Um, and sales forecasting, which is what we are going to be talking about today. Um, thank you so much for joining us. And as we go through the presentation, um, you know, make sure to type in your questions. Michael's going to kind of fish through them. Um, we're we're going to leave some time at the end to answer any questions you may have, but if it feels appropriate as we're going through, um, <clears throat> We will definitely try and get get to it, get to your questions. Um, so let's get started. And you know, welcome to the wonderful world of sales forecasting and merchandise planning, which is essentially the science to the art of retail. Um, which for me, it's my most favorite thing uh, to talk about. Um, why? Uh, it can change your life and it can change your business. Uh, and that is even without growing sales. So you guys ready? Let's get started. Uh, so let's take a, a step back for a moment and think about your business in a different way. Uh, we often get bogged down by the day to day, especially in the last year. So sometimes we forget about the big picture. And it's, it's more about working in your business. Right now, a lot of people are probably focused on working in the business and not on the business. So my goal today is kind of to help you sort of shift your focus on where are my successes, what are, what's going well, how are you keeping up with customer demand and planning, and really challenging you to look at your business in a holistic way from 40,000 feet above. Uh, ask yourself, do you have the processes and procedures in place to focus on the things that you can control and to take your business to the next level? So we, we start with, you know, do you break down your business on the class level and buy accordingly? Do you have an inventory management system that keeps you organized and tracks the data? Have you implemented a sales forecast or sales plan with a merchandise plan that provides monthly purchasing budgets against realistic sales goals? And you know, really, at the end of the day, have you set goals for profitability and cash flow this year and break it down by quarter and then really look at what will it take to get you there, okay? So this is sort of the holistic view of what does my business look like? Where are my successes? What can I do better? And how can I move forward in a profitable way? So 
let's start with basically the class structure. And I start here because global purchasing in, in the retail business doesn't necessarily work. And the reason why is, is you don't get the benefit of getting the most out of your inventory, which is your, your biggest asset, right? Your biggest expense, your biggest asset. And it's the actual controllable asset in your business. So a meaningful classification structure is incredibly valuable for your retail business because the vendors come and go and the trends happen on the class level. But having too many or too few classes can be problematic. So with both, and what I mean by that, with both, you can miss opportunity that's hiding in the numbers, right? Data, 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 knowledge is power. So independent sales goals by classification each month is key because not all classes are created equal. And this way we can see the opportunities on the class le level make the data-driven decisions based on actual numbers and grow the business organically. Um, you know, I like to call it the spaghetti method, you know, which is essentially, you know, you throw a bunch of stuff on the wall and you see, see what sticks. Um, unfortunately, we don't live in a world today where that, you know, is realistic um, without measuring, right? Uh, so it's super, super, super important to build basically the infrastructure of your business, which is your class structure to then make data-driven decisions. So how many of you have an inventory management system in place? Um, and how many of you that do use it to its full capability for your, for your store? So if you don't have one, you need one. Um, if you have one and you aren't using it to hold your biggest asset and controllable expense, aka your inventory, information you need to. So many of the offerings on the market today function as a front of the house POS system, things like Square or Shopify. These only track your sales, right? And, and customer information, very basic customer information. So you know, investing the time and money into an inventory management system that will track your inventory that you buy against those sales that you're making is actually very, very crucial to your financial success. Um, as I mentioned before, it's your number one largest controllable expense, your inventory. Uh, so if we're not tracking it and understanding how it's going out, against how it's coming in, you know, we could miss some opportunities for financial successes. So one of the biggest mistakes I see retailers make is ignoring the purchase order management piece of the business. Uh, you know, a lot of people, when a box arrives, they enter the items into the, the POS system and just start selling right away. So, you know, what the purchase order management really does for you is to understand how much is actually coming in in this period of time, how much is coming in next month, how much is coming in the month after. So what comes in, again, must be tracked against what's going out. The other really great metric when you use the inventory management piece is the age of your inventory and the sell-through. Um, you know, if you don't track the POs, you'll have a hard time tracking these important metrics through you know, reporting out of your system. This also is actually very important when you're creating a monthly promotion and markdown schedule as well. In addition to measuring your cash margin by class, by vendor, and we'll get to the vocab in, in a bit, um, cash margin is different from gross margin uh, it, it's actually the key metric that will help you understand your profitability on the class level and then also on the vendor level. As I mentioned before, the classes and, and vendors within, in, within those classes perform differently. And you'll need to actually look at both metrics 
So for example, if you buy from a vendor, let's just say it's vendor John Smith, and if you buy three different classifications from that vendor, you know, one of those classes may not perform as well as the other two. And you'll want to know that kind of information to make powerful buying decisions in the future. The other thing that's really come to light as of late is multiple locations and e-commerce. So there's different demand and buying patterns for both um, e-commerce and brick and mortar. And you'll also want to track sales across those two channels separately if possible. Uh, that way you can also make decisions on what do I put online? Does, you know, if I don't have time to put everything online to sell, you know, where should I really focus? These, these this type of data helps you make those, those important decisions. So let's get to the nuts and bolts. Uh, what is a sales forecast and merchandising plan? So it's, complicated yet quite simple, but it can do very, very big things for you. Essentially, it's a monthly sales goal and monthly open to buy budget, right? How much you're going to sell, how much you're going to bring in every single month. And if you use an annual sales forecast and you break it down by month, knowing your break even point, which is essentially your annual revenue that you need to achieve to break even, okay? And you are analyzing the key metrics that you pull from your POS and your inventory management system, if they're you know separate, you can start to keep a scorecard of what's working, right? And what needs improvement. Uh, a sales forecast and merchandise plan helps you build your inventory levels, provide you a buying plan, where you will achieve the proper balance and flow of new and fresh inventory each month. This is crucial in retail. New product drives traffic into the store. Can I, can I get a raise of hands and an, a, and an amen? Um, if you have the right product at the right time, you'll cash out at the end of the season if you're measuring it along the way. And so this process will also give you the tools and the information if you need to pivot the business when something goes wrong and isn't working for you and if it's out of your control. And you know, we experienced this last year and are still going through it with COVID. Uh, you know, there are things that you know, we simply cannot control. And if, if we don't understand where our business is today and where we need it to be tomorrow to keep the doors open, and to keep it going, you know, we won't we won't be able to make powerful decisions based on actual reality. The success in your in your business is building and retaining your cash. So you know, this is all the while while you're while you're also constantly reinvesting in your inventory. The top level sales doesn't necessarily show you how much to reinvest and when, unless you dig into it on the class level and the seasonality of it. And I'll give you a great example of this. So this happened to me personally. I, when I started implementing a plan in my retail store, I thought the most profitable class was my largest volume class, which was jackets and outerwear. And boy, was I wrong. You know, just because I was doing the highest gross sales in this class, it didn't actually mean it was the most profitable. Since it was a seasonal class, I learned that it, it, that essentially what I was missing was looking at my gross margin versus my cash margin. So where my cash margin was just fine, I was selling the majority of the merchandise at the end of the season at a high markdown. So my gross margin was affected. And so what the plan did for me was allow me to understand when the investment should be made, right? Balance and flow, balance and flow, remember that. You know, when that investment should be made at the top of the season to have a sell, to, to maximize the selling season that was ahead, right? And 
potentially reduce the amount of markdowns at the end of the season. Okay. So it was, it was a beautiful thing. It, it was one of those things where I had this aha moment of, wow, I can't believe that I was missing this, right? It's like, it, for those of you that are in the apparel business, men's or women, you know, it's like why, you know, you don't think to bring sweaters into your store for fall until, you know, September or October because it's not cold, but you really actually should bring it in in July and August so you have a longer selling season and you can continue to keep the wheels turning and run with your opportunities for that season. So that's a little example for you. So, you know, next up, the, the next two slides are, are pretty simple. I, I put this in here because I think the vocabulary for retail, um, you know, sometimes gets sort of lost. Like when I first um, started working with, with someone to help me with this sales forecasting and merchandise stuff, um, and she said to me, the words open to buy, I didn't even know what that meant. And, and I, I had been in the retail business for four years. I had had my store for four years. So uh, here is just a very simple outline that gives you the definitions of the key metrics that you should be measuring, okay? All of these terms are important for you to understand. And it's also understand what it, you know, what is it and how do I use it? right? So planned sales, essentially just your sales goals, planned inflow, which is essentially the total amount that you have to receive, right? That you budgeted to receive for the month, okay? Or season, if you buy seasonally. Your purchase orders, that's easy. The total amount you have on order by the delivery date, very, very important to monitor. And then you're open to buy, which is the net amount left to spend after you include your purchase orders, okay? Cost of goods sold, we all are familiar with that, the actual cost of the goods that you sold, cost of purchase dollar and cost of purchase percentage. This is something that you don't find necessarily easily when you're Googling. Um, this is the actual cost of the goods that you purchase, right? Regardless if you sell them, cash out, cash out, cash out. Uh, and when you look at it as a percentage, which there are industry standards, right, for each, for each industry based on initial markup, you know, you can calculate your cost of purchase percentage and then set goals for that, right? Your cash margin, which is, which is pretty simple, how much cash you have left to pay your bills. Gross margin is the margin that you actually achieve on the product you sold, uh, IMU initial markup, I paid $10, I'm selling it for 20, my IMU is 50%. Maintain margin and gross margin percentage, which is essentially the same thing. So some people say use maintain margin, some people use gross margin, gross margins on your you know, financial statements. Your turns, super important, the number of times in your average stock levels, are sold over a period of time. Uh, I like to look at this annually. Stock to sales ratios compares your sales to your inventory levels. Um, and then your sell through, which is you know, the rate at which you, you sell your merchandise. So this is kind of a little handy dandy sheet for you to keep, you know, if you wanna, don't worry, I'm not quizzing you at the end. Um, if you wanna keep it for reference. So we get into the actual retail math, right? These are the KPIs, which essentially is the, all the vocab. So open to buy, essentially your planned inflow, what your total budget is for the month minus your on order. You can look at this at retail or at cost. Um, I would say the majority of, of, of people that I work with use cost, some work, use retail depending on the circumstances. Um, cost of purchase, total of your invoices from the vendors for the same period of time, cost of purchase percentage, self-explanatory. So essentially what we're gonna do here is take this retail math little cheat sheet, right? And then start to look at how to move forward 
that 40,000 feet, right? And really come up with an organized process to move the business forward, even if that means we, we aren't growing sales, okay? Because we can grow profitability and cash without growing sales. Okay, so where do you begin? So after you've broken down the business by class, um, you know, which is very, very important, what you'll start to do is, is pull out, you know, key metrics. What are my initial markups? What is my maintained margin? Where have my actual sales and cost of goods sold been? What, what are my actual markdown percentages to sales and markdown dollars? And then what were my actual cost of purchase? So we first look at this very top level, class level, okay? Let's then say, where are my opportunities? Take those classes out, right? I like to say, let's focus on opportunity first, okay? Um, there's always gonna be something we can fix. Let's really focus on where the opportunity is first and then get that all squared away, have a plan for that for the future, for the, you know, right here, right now, and then, and then the future ahead. And then let's focus on what do we do with, with what's kind of dragging us down. So remember, the, if you do this on the vendor level and not the class level, you might be missing some something, right? The trend is on the class level. So first break it down by class and then you can go an, even a step further if you'd like and really look on the vendor level. And all of these metrics are, are available to you when you've implemented the inventory management system. So you can simply go into your, your system and, and run a report with all of these metrics on it and then plug it into either you know, Excel onto a spreadsheet or even some systems allow you to download reports into Excel so you can work there. Um, I wanna say, keep this little information, this little, you know, knowledge is power stuff, okay, handy because it will help you during essentially the grand finale, which is the setting goals and creating the monthly scorecard, okay? So, I'm gonna get a little touchy feely in this step. Um, you know, I'm not a big person on, you know, what are other people doing, um, and and what does that look like for me, and am I doing well or am I not doing well? You know, this isn't something necessarily to to focus on to to make you feel great or feel bad, but it's more of the knowledge is power. So every retail business, you know, has, has essentially baselines for successes with the key metrics, right? So, you know, how that, that includes by class for, for each industry and each vertical stock to sales ratios at, at any given month, um, turn goals, maintain margins, initial markups, all of those types of things, you can find resources that say, this is the average for my industry and what vertical I'm in. And then it's always nice to just say, okay, how am I performing, right? Um, because really at the end of the day, what's more important is how do I align with my actual profitability goals, okay? So it, if you go through the exercise of doing a check against your profitability goals, then you'll actually help identify what's working and where you have room for improvement, right? What's working, where can I, where can I do better? Does that make sense? Um, this then allows you to move forward to really actually take the 40,000 feet approach with some of the data, okay? And set goals. So this is essentially the big finale, right? So you want to build a, a scorecard. Um, we'll get to an example shortly. And this is going to allow you to understand 
what is performing best at the class level. So for example, dresses may outsell t-shirts, you know, sales, gross sales, but which one is more profitable for you? And as we, as I mentioned earlier, more sales doesn't always mean more profit, right? Um, that that's very, very, very important for you to remember in, in this process. So building your annual sales goal by class from the current customer demand above your break even point. So that's essentially step one. This is crucial because especially now since last year at this time really has no relevance to your current business. You know, looking back the last 90 days or even, you know, since maybe August, um, you know, to really understand your customer demand that's been happening right here and right now. Um, if your customer demand over the last 90 days or whatever period you choose isn't at your break even, which, which essentially means you're not selling enough to hit your break even point, further analyzation should be done to find the profit centers in your business. Um, so that way you can focus, really, really focus on, on the sales growth. Uh, we understand that, right? Sometimes, um, especially in times like, like this last year with COVID, you know, we really have to monitor expenses while we're, we're trying to sell, right? And potentially not sell as much as we as we have in the past due to circumstances, again, you know, that, that we cannot control. Um, so the class structure analysis will, will ensure organic growth and not just a, I want to grow my business 25% this year. You know, it, it, that would be amazing, but it might not necessarily be realistic based on, you know, business today. Um, another thing that I really push people to do uh, because a lot of retailers didn't necessarily get into the retail business for the science part, you know, the math part, um, is use external resources. Uh, there's many resources online. We have the Colin, you know, SBDC that's, that's here to help and provide resources for you and, you know, other companies that can help you with building things like this, okay? Okay. Um, you know, depending on the size of your business, depending on the, the amount of time you have, you know, all of those things are factored in, okay, it must be factored in. So set goals you would like to achieve that are not only sales driven, okay, cash margin, gross margin, turn, this is how you can grow the profit while not necessarily growing sales, if you are already exceeding your break even point. And I see this happen all the time. It's really, really, really a beautiful thing. So the annual sales goal, okay? And break it down by month, all by class. Remember, all, everything is all by class, right? And then a markdown plan, and then break that down by month, which, you know, is, is pretty standard. We know in January and July, it's sale month, it's sale time, right? So we can expect higher markdown dollars given away to the customers during those times. Uh, the cost of purchase percentage, which will give you two things, the cash margin dollars and the total cost of purchase, which is essentially your budget, okay? So there are standards for calculating an ideal cost of purchase percentage, and it's pretty simple. Um, it, it really has to do with your initial markup. So for example, <clears throat> if your initial markup is 52%, the calculation is 100% minus 52% plus 4%, okay? Now I can send that in the notes. Um, I forgot that in the slide, I'm very sorry. Um, so if, if you have a higher initial markup, meaning you pay less for your inventory and have the ability to mark it up, then you your cost of purchase percentage goes down, right? Um, this gives you a, a larger cash margin on your merchandise. Uh, 
again, my favorite, favorite, favorite metric when measuring profitability is, is cost of purchase and cost of purchase percentage. Um, it really, really is helpful. So what do we do next? We use your data. Um, we do this to measure monthly and quarterly performance. We measure your opportunities and threats or, or you're measuring your opportunities and threats and this gives you an idea of what kind of immediate take actions you need to do, as well as a take action for the next you know, season or next quarter. Uh, we used to buy really far in advance, right? De depend not, not even really depending on what industry you were in, um, but you know, really, really bought you know, four to six months into the future. So don't look too far ahead. And also don't look too far back uh, because, you know, again, a year for a year ago, you know, we weren't in a, in a global pandemic. So unless you're buying holiday merchandise, which it's crazy, that market just happened two weeks ago, the season just ended or, you know, holiday time just ended. And then, you know, they had to go buy for next November and December, October, November, December, you know, it's crazy, but don't, don't go too far back. So what, what essentially you're going to do with your data is you're going to build the scorecard, right? So this is, this is the big, big, big takeaway um, other than actually, I think, the, the KPIs and the vocabulary stuff um, for this, this presentation today. So this scorecard is going to help empower you to make the decisions that are going to move you forward. Um, so essentially, and, and you all have, have been provided this document, some people might want to, you know, move things around. I'm more than happy to help in any way, shape or form. If you all have questions and need me to walk you through this at any time, um, I completely understand. So first you want to start with your goals, right? So I like to create a tab for each month and then have a, a column for each class, okay? And then you'll essentially plug in what your goals are by month, by class, sales, your purchasing budget that you're giving yourself, okay? What your initial markup goal is and what your maintain margin goal is, okay? And then what I've created is the formulas for cost of purchase, goal and actual, as well as your cash margin. So those are formulas in there for you. I did not lock them so you can see them, right? How, how they're plugged in there. And then once the month closes, very, very soon after, if not, you know, the first day of the following month, it's really a good idea for you to plug in your actuals to see how you performed, okay? And this again is going to allow you to take action on what you what you potentially need to do today you know to to move the business forward and then look out a little bit and and readjust right reforecast re redo the plan for the future for the next 90 days based on what's going on right here and right now and for those of you that have never really done this before, um, I would suggest for the first couple months, just use this as, as you know, knowledge, right? Knowledge is power. Data-driven information can get you results, right? Um, you know, we, we live in the world sometimes of, if only I had more people walk through the door. I hear this a lot and, um, you know, it's one of those things where you think that would be great. But when I look at stores in New York City, for example, that have a ton of traffic, their conversion rates aren't that high. So, you know, be careful what you wish for a little it makes the buying process harder. Okay. So the moral of the story and sort of in conclusion here is that if you're measuring it 
you can improve it. And when you break down your business into the little profit centers, you can really track how you're doing against a bunch of different things, right? Industry standards, what kind of goals you've set for yourself. And then you can also track your cash, which as we know, and, and last week um, in, my, in my last session, cash is king. We're constantly reinvesting into our business and we want to know where we should be doing that based on what is actually making us the most money. Does that make sense? So constantly be, be looking at your business, work on it. Don't let, don't, don't work, don't work as much in it. I know that's hard, you know, easier said than done. I get that myself. Um, and, you know, be patient and ask questions, use resources and all of that kind of good stuff. Um, you know, and, and your future will be bright. So thank you very much. Um, I'll open it up to any questions that you guys might have. This is my contact information. If you need me to walk you through um, the, the documents or anything like that. Um, and I really want to thank that SVDC, the Colin SVDC um, for, you know, having me and you guys being here bright and early. All right, so let's open it up for questions. If you have any questions, uh, you can add them in the chat box. Oh, did it again. <laughs> Not great with the technology. Nah, no worries. All right, so here's an interesting question from Gabriella. With so many ways to measure or within metrics, how do you ensure you're measuring the right thing? Great question. So I would, I would really focus on the, the key, really in the beginning, if, if you don't have anything in place, focus on, I'm gonna, I'll just list them. I don't know how many there are. So sales, right? That's very important. Net sales, don't include sales tax, okay? Purchases, goes back to the cost of purchase. And then your initial markup. And then what your maintained margin has been, you know, historically. So those four things, use those first, okay? Because the sales and the purchases gives you your cash margin. Sales minus purchases equals your cash margin. So for example, if you are if you sell $100 and you spent $80 to do that, right? You only made 20, okay? Now, if you sell, sold $100 and you spent 40 to do that, right? And the $40 isn't just the cost of the item that you sold, it's the cost of everything you brought in over that period of time, okay? So that is the money shot right there, the cash margin. So you always wanna make sure that over time, you're getting a decent cash margin. And that again is relevant to what your initial markup is, which is super important. Higher the initial markup, the lower your, your cost of purchase can be, which means a larger cash margin. So focus on those four things first before you get into the crazy stuff like turn, sell through, all of that. All right, another question from James. How do you make decisions about pruning inventory categories or selections? Um, so what I would do first is if you've already set it up, okay, um, basically look at, at just run, simply run a sales report, a net sales report. And if you, if you have a list, like I often find that sometimes, you know, a business that's doing $500,000 a year, they've got 50 classes set up in their POS system. So <clears throat> take a look at how it's set up now. Okay. And then start to build it based on the like. Okay. So, so combine things where there's tiny revenue, you, you might need it, right? So a good example is um, an apothecary class in a 
in a gift store, right? So that could include candles, apothecary, bath products, right? So I would suggest that anything where you are doing greater than $25,000, $30,000 a year annually, it, would, it should be looked at as its own classification, sort of a benchmark. So everything else that's the like, can, you can start to combine. And this kind of leads into a question by Mitchell. Uh, it says that a lot of the advice uh, is for businesses that kind of already are in existence and can kind of look back at numbers and sales. Uh, what advice would you give for a new business starting out on best practices? Ooh, I love that question. You're a newbie. Well, I mean, really, I mean, you just, you can start from scratch. So that's actually a beautiful thing. So you don't have any habits yet. <laughs> um, so where I would begin for you and with any new stores, I've actually got two, two stores right now that are new that I'm working with is essentially, you know, you start with who are you, right? Um, and then you build the, the class structure out but what, what is beautiful about a new store is you can take very clean numbers for your break even, okay? So gather all of, your, all of your information about your expenses, your monthly expenses moving forward, okay? And, and, break, and get that into a break even so you can understand here's how much I, I need to do in revenue, right? And then that way, we can build a conservative plan um, moving to move forward. So a lot of research. I, I always suggest, you know, look at what other people are doing in your space. What do you like about it? What are the initial markups? Who are my vendors? Who do I want my target customer to be? And then you build the plan the, with no data, just simply off of that break even and you look at your profit centers, AKA your classes, right? Each one as a percentage to the total. And you can find that kind of information, um, you know, online or talking, you know, getting me involved, getting the Colin SBDC involved to really understand, okay, this is the industry standard for how many, what the denim class looks like against the top class, against the dresses class and all of that kind of stuff. So it's actually a beautiful thing that you're green because you can start, start from scratch and there's no, there's no, there is no hat, there are no bad habits. <laughs> and then one of the last questions is, uh, can you explain or what is IMU? Okay, so that is initial markup. Um, and what that essentially means is you pay X amount for an item and I'll keep it really simple. You pay $10 for something and you at cost and you will be retailing it for 20. Okay. So the calculation is how much you paid for it, $10 divided by the 20, right? And that gives you the percentage that your initial markup is. So a lot of people think, okay, well, that sounds like 100% to me, right? But it isn't 100%, it's 50% because you have to account for paying the $10. So it's essentially the initial markup that you get on the product that you're buying and then selling. And when then you go and drill into your maintain margin, the maintain margin is actually the margin you achieved after you've sold it, right? Sometimes you have to mark it down. So then that initial markup is maintained at a different number. All right, so that looks like those are all of the questions. Uh, so again, thank you everyone for attending uh, today's seminar. And uh, you can look for this seminar to be on our YouTube channel uh, in a couple of days, if you would like to kind of go through it and review it. But other than that, uh, that concludes the seminar for today. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, thank Bye. you so much, you guys.